I'm so honored and happy to have you all here. And sorry that we couldn't fit all our partners in this panel discussion, but the time is limited and hopefully this will be like a little appetizer. Um, and maybe in um, next fall, we could have like a bigger webinar to give voices to all of you. And, and I know you do amazing job with, with children being safe and online in your own field. And that's what we want to hear more right now. So let's start with um, introducing yourselves and please tell everyone who you are and how are the safe use of media and digital safety skills visible in your own field. And let's do this so that I'll, I'll say your name and then you'll get the chance to be whenever. So let's start with Stian. I think you are the, the furthest guest in our panel today. Welcome. Thank you. Can any, everybody hear me? That's great. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us to join this project. We are very proud to take part of this and we think this can be a great start of an international cooperation to try to do something that really matters for children out there. Uh, ECPAT Norway is a part of ECPAT International, which is the largest global network uh, working together to fight all kinds of sexual exploitation of children. Uh, in the recent years, we have been a lot of focus on traveling offenders, but now, especially during this uh, pandemic situation, we see more and more offenders go online and try to find their child victims there. Uh, we also support survivors after um, uh, that kind of uh, criminal activities. Uh, we, uh, during this uh, last years, we have seen more and more children come online and they spend more and more time online. Uh, and it also leads to more sexual exploitation of children in those kind of digital channels. Uh, right now, at least in Norway, the schools are closed because of the pandemic situation, uh, so a lot of the education goes online. We also uh, are concerned about the leisure activities of children. You know, all kind of activities like football, uh, different sports, uh, music, corps, theater, all kind of activities is closed. So what are the children doing? They sit home in front of their computer all day long. And of course, uh, as more time they spend online, uh, as uh, uh, more, uh, uh, it, it can be more uh, online sexual exploitation happening. So, so we are worried for the situation right now. Uh, one thing is the children, but we are also asking questions about their parents and do they have uh, enough uh, skills to know exactly what their children are doing online. I mean, for example, if you are playing one online game, they normally have some kind of chat forum where you can discuss different uh, how to go to the next level and that kind of thing. But in those channels, also offenders are operating, try to find their child victims. So it's very important that both teachers, uh, parents and the different caregivers understand what's going on. Uh, another uh, part we think it's important to work with is advocacy. Uh, we see, for example, in Norwegian laws, uh, NGOs can do nothing like you are doing in Finland, try to remove uh, uh, child sexual abuse material from the internet, because if you look on that kind of materials in Norway, we are in fact criminals. And we also see the European Union has been working with the new uh, Privacy Act lately, which can stop tech companies from doing their works to protect children. So it's a lot of work to, to do. Uh, I also brought my new co-worker today, Julia, if, uh, if it's something to uh, add, you have to feel welcome. Thank you, Stian, and thank you very much for allowing me to be part of this. Um, I mean, you, you've covered, you know, the important things. Um, there was just, I think, the point to, to raise um, as well in, in relation to something the Minister of the Interior said um, in her speech about the idea that we were taught, you know, as, as adults, we were taught as children to be wary of the stranger, you know, the stranger at the park or something. And this idea of stranger danger to allow parents as well and caregivers and teachers to understand 
the form that this now takes online, that it's someone who can be pretending to be a child and it could be them that are actually targeting um, their children. So just to, to highlight that fact. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Stan and Julie. And Kimmo, you're welcome. Thank you, Paula. So, first of all, uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Kim Olkunem. I'm working in the National Police Board of Finland. Um, before I started working here, I worked three years in Interpol in Singapore in uh, Innovation Center. Um, I had a great opportunity to meet colleagues all over the world and I also had a chance to meet uh, children from all over the world when they were school in, in Singapore. And I had chance also to visit the school of my daughters to tell something about online safety. And uh, I was I was really amazed how much they knew about online safety and, and what kind of skills they had, even though they were that time, I, I think they were something like seven or eight years old. So I hope that's something we could we could bring also to Finland to to increase the knowledge how to um, build the foundation for the online 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 safety. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank uh, Protect Children for the invitation for the National Police Board to be part of this uh, very important project. Our minister, uh, Ms. Ohisalo, already talked about uh, road safety and, and uh, compared the road safety to uh, digital safety. And in a way, she took uh, uh, words from my mouth. But it's, it's nice to have a minister who, who thinks alike. Um, I would like to compare also the road safety to digital safety in a way that uh, when my kids, when they started to school, um, when they were seven years old, I took them to their school, which is quite close, but we went the road and, and uh, the pedestrian crossing, we made sure that we looked right and left and left once more and right and a couple of times that. And then I told them that they have to make sure that the car stops before they start crossing the road. So I would like to compare this also to an uh, online environment. You have to be sure what you are doing. Sometimes it, it's good to trust, but sometimes it's also good to make sure that intentions of others are, are in line. Um, and still they are older now, but still they make sure that the car stop. And uh, I would like to think that they also know how to be online, how to use services, and they also keep in mind that there must might be someone behind the keyboard that might not have the right intentions in that moment. Um, cyberspace, it's, it's a good place to uh, keep in contact with friends. Um, like it was said before, now lots of uh, uh, kids, they are, they are going to school in the internet, they are keeping in, in contact with their friends online, and also they have hobbies and, and stuff like that. So as adults, it's our responsibility to make sure that the environment also in cyberspace is safe. Uh, personally, I don't believe digital native con uh, concept. I, I think no one is born like a digital native who knows what to do, how to behave, what are the rules online or, or in, in the real world. I'm a fifth generation police officer, in, in, so my mother was a police officer. And even though when I was born, when I was young, I didn't know all the road rules. It didn't come from my genes. So it's important that we as adults, we provide the information for our children and also, same time, we are learning something. Um, it's good to have uh, conversations with, with children now and then over the dinner or, or someplace other to uh, hear what, what are the things online. Are there something new? What are you doing? What, what applications are you, you using? And, and so, so at the same time, we are learning. We might provide some information also 
for our children. Um, I was also asked in, in this panel that what is new and noteworthy in, in online, and it's really difficult to answer that question because there's so much things going on at the moment online. There are lots of new, new services. Some old services are not being used by young people anymore. Some new services are having new ways to, to be used. And um, these services can be used, of course, for good. And mostly they are, they are used for that purposes. But um, I'm working in the police and unfortunately I, I see lots of things that bad things that are happening in, in online. We heard all news about 10 years, 10 year old uh, Italian um, girl who, uh, who uh, was kind of a victim of a TikTok challenge. And uh, we had same challenges when I was young. We had exactly the same challenge in school, but the difference was that information didn't spread so fast. And uh, that time when I was young, teachers, they had possibilities to uh, tell kids that please don't do that and it, it could cause harm, it, it could even result of uh, the death. But nowadays it's not possible. Kids have, children, they have almost infinity uh, amount of information. They can use that information for good or, or something else. And it's important for us to teach children also to um, recognize what information you can trust, what you cannot trust. So it's a constant evaluation of the information, what is available. And learning to be safe online, it doesn't happen on a blink of an eye. It starts when children are given their first smart device. And this project targets children from nine to, uh, five to nine years old. And I, I think that's a perfect age for children to start learning uh, how to be safe online. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to working together in this project for better online safety for children and for us all. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Powerful metaphors. Nice. Uh, and then let's hear it from Maria Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you and good afternoon for everyone. I'm a director of education and culture department at a regional state administrative agency. Our agency organizes brief courses of in-service training. We hold hundreds, hundreds of training sessions each year for teachers and other professionals in education sector. Uh, these Training is financed by the Ministry of Education and Culture, and the training we organize is free of charge. We have noticed that adults need more and more information and communication pedagogy skills, but also digital safety skills. So the need for training is growing. The challenging question is how to deal with different situations if problems are found in a child's use of the internet. This kind of guidance is needed in addition to strengthening education and their own skills. It, it is very nice to be with you and I'm uh, waiting for that we can train together, we can advise together and maybe we can also educate today together. Thank you. And we most certainly will. That's a promise. Uh, and then Wilhelmina. Thank you. Maria Lisa. Hi, I'm Wilhelmina Wolbeck. I'm responsible for communication, sustainability, and brand develop development uh, within DNA. And for some reason, I'm time to time turning into blue. So maybe one of your figures already. <laughs> so I'm actually in my eight year son's room and the coloring in this room is quite uh, weird. I was also thinking that we should have a campaign uh, protect parents against children's Legos because I just stepped into one, but, but let's change that. Let's take that one other time, but it's really great to be part of this. Uh, this uh, uh, great, uh, great uh, 
partners so that we can together figure out ways how to guide our children and, and, and young people so that they can really uh, cope in the, on the internet. Uh, as a big uh, teleoperator, we have a huge role as we are the provider of all those connections. And we do see that children from the age of six are getting phones even before when they are going to schools. And even though uh, we've got the old security services, the biggest threat it are the people themselves, both the adults and children, so that they should have the knowledge and understanding how to work in the, in, on the internet. And I, I've been in many events in the schools telling parents about these things. And uh, the problem is that the parents don't understand things. So, so it's it's the both things. You have to uh, inform children in a nice way, but at the same time. Uh, give knowledge and understanding to parents because they are really lacking behind in this. Uh, uh, as I see with my 14-year-old, he's so way before me in all these internet things that uh, I don't have, like, uh, I, I'm totally lack behind. But it's great to be here and really waiting for uh, uh, changing ideas and doing this together. Thank you. Thank you, Wilhelmine. And I'm sure we all heard when you mentioned Lego. <laughs> <laughs> and then can I have Helena, please? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Helena Toronen, and I'm representing the Finnish Transportation and Communications Agency, Traficom, and their National Cybersecurity Center here in Finland. And it is so wonderful to be, be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, just discussing how we see media usage and digital security skills in our industry. While as the National Cybersecurity Center, we are usually called up upon when something goes wrong. Uh, so we see all the things that lead to this point where something actually goes wrong and we need to start uh, investigating or seeing how we can prevent those things in the future. So a lot of these things come down to awareness and education and being able to share what's happening in the digital security world because it's becoming more and more entwined with our daily lives with like Dimo and everyone else before me saying that children younger and younger and younger are gaining access to devices, digital services, going online, sharing on social media. And we need to know from day one how to approach these devices like we would approach a crossing. When do we know to cross and when do we know to stop? What's a green light and what's a red light? And it comes down to very basic skills. It comes down to passwords. It comes down to what kind of services you're using. It comes down to what information you're sharing. And the more we understand the basics of how to protect ourselves, the better we can also protect each other and all the people around us. And the more we gain these skills, including technical, social, language, uh, physical slash cyber skills, we will be able to create better services with more secure uh, elements to them. And then that way also share more and more about how we can stay safe every day in the digital world. And from the cybersecurity center's perspective, we are so happy to share all the elements that we see in our daily lives, how to help prevent uh, the things from happening that are happening. And a lot of things happen under covers. Uh, a lot of the things you will never see because you're not aware that it could be a problem. And saying that people are more and more online every day is so true to us as well. We can see that, uh, for example, children might not understand that um, causing a problem on another kid's Minecraft server, for example, is a problem and possibly illegal. You're not just allowed to go somewhere and wreak havoc if you try to gain access to their system, for example. So these are also the elements that we want to share and help children and their parents understand that 
to be able to be more secure in the cyber world, we have to understand what is happening, what are our actions and how they uh, affect both on a digital and a physical scale. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. I agree on everything with you. And uh, last but not least, Sunny, you're bringing us a different kind of view and a world full of also benefits and, and fun and learning and different things. But tell us more. Yeah, I'm delighted to be here and great to see, first of all, all kinds of uh, talent and, of course, a former colleagues. So, hi, Wilhelm, and great to see you once again. Um, yeah, I come from the company called Hubo Gaming. Uh, we're an esports organization. So, basically, we have gamers, we're competitive gamers in different games, and then influencers around the gaming, let's say, scene. And yeah, you could say that there has never been the um, more, uh, let's say, concrete uh, time than now, because obviously gaming is one of the big aspects that, that you know, kids and uh, adults are also doing more and more, since, especially since the pandemic started. And if you look at those, like statistically, uh, social media globally is being used, like, I don't know, two and a half hours a day per average user. So you can basically think about, like, what is the amount of a teenager or a younger kid uh, if the average is 2.2 hours? And one of the aspects I was like really surprised, uh, even though I kind of consider myself to be somewhat aware of the digital uh, you know, information and the new trends, that I didn't know all the channels that the younger kids were actually using. So there were like uh, channels like, first of all, Twitch and Discord and Reddit and obviously Snapchat and TikTok. And the problem uh, was that, that I wasn't there myself. So there were many times that we, especially I think that uh, Helena and uh, many of you said that we need to, first of all, of course, uh, take care of the children and educate the parents and the schools because uh, we're also a part of this uh, other initiative called Empathy Package and uh, that was really surprising because there were many parents that say that they didn't know if their kids uh, were being bu online bullied. So they actually didn't talk about at all. And I kind of find this understandable because if you don't know, if you don't have any clue on the platforms and what do you do there, maybe you, you don't have a conversation like naturally because you're not using those channels yourself. And I find that it's, on, it's not only a topic of kids, because now what I've been noticing that there, because the world is online, so we don't have like Finnish or Norwegian or local people, we have a totally uh, global audience. And when we started to maintain our accounts uh, on the gaming accounts, and we, let's say, lost a game, and there were actual death threats coming from uh, across the world. And I was like, what? And then I was kind of like shocked in a way because I haven't received red death threats to myself. And I was like asking to the players, is this common? And they were like, yeah, well, it happens usually after every game. So some better just like gets angry. And I was like, OK. And maybe some kids are, let's say, a little, let's say older kids can be used to that kind. So they can ignore. But think about the younger one who joins these kind of new platforms. And there are all kinds of people there. So, yeah. Two-fronted, educating the parents in the schools and, of course, knowing what kind of uh, channels the kids are using and make them safe. Very powerful, and we're all nodding here and agreeing on everything. Um, I think we have one last question left because we have to. We have like twenty minutes left, and I'm I'm looking at all faces on my on my screen and I want everyone to get their say so let's give your best elevator speech about what kind of trends or aspects related to digital safety do you think will be the most prominent in the future something that we should be um, kind of ahead while stepping into this project and let's start with Steve and Julie. 
Thank you so much. Um, like other told, I think uh, internet is not a country. Internet is uh, a global arena without any borders, and that's an important thing to make us work together because uh, uh, the criminal person can be located in one country and uh, the victim can be somewhere else in the world. Uh, I think it's also important to understand that uh, the offenders uh, looking for their victims other places to try to protect themselves. It will be more hard for the police to investigate somebody uh, located somewhere else in the world. Um, uh, I also think we need to uh, discuss how to make uh, easy rules that uh, children can understand. Uh, uh, and that's why I think this project is uh, extremely important. You know, nobody is born with uh, safety skills. They don't uh, know how to act in the traffic and they de definitely not know how to operate on the Internet if nobody told them. Uh, we also need to understand some children are more clever than their parents uh, regarding what they are doing uh, online. And uh, I don't think it matter what kind of family you're from. If you're for a poor family or a rich family, if the parents and caregivers are not there to follow up their children in their daily activities, we don't know what they are doing and actually what's going on. Uh, before, we was very afraid of uh, will our children end up on the dark web. Right now, we see more and more cases where you will find uh, abuse material on Instagram, on Facebook, on Snapchat, TikTok, etc., etc. So, so I think this is going on uh, all over. And uh, when we think our children is uh, doing something safe, uh, they probably meet some kind of risk. That is one side of it. Another problem is the children who make nude photos of themselves and share with friends. And uh, uh, when uh, the girlfriend break up, then share the picture with the rest of the world, you have a real problem going on. So it's a lot of thing going on and we have to be aware of this thing and we cannot close our eyes. Uh, I also think it's uh, important that uh, we are all working together. We cannot sit like an NGO and think we can solve this problem ourselves. The government cannot solve it uh, themselves. Uh, so we need some kind of a three-part cooperation where both uh, companies, tech companies, uh, NGOs and uh, different authorities and government work together and trying to find the recipe. And I think we need some clear guidance, both for the children, of course, and I think this model with uh, uh, red, uh, green and yellow light is a great example because they can relate it to something they already learn. Uh, so it's not a huge step to learn how to navigate safe on the Internet, too. Um, and I also think we uh, we need to discuss um, one second. Um, about how uh, how we can involve schools, uh, parents, and uh, all other kind of institutions where children are active to try to make the society understand what's going on. We cannot close our eyes and tell this will not happen with my child because it can happen with anyone everywhere in the world. So. Uh, this kind of uh, safety skills is extremely important and uh, uh, now we also see one thing is in Scandinavia and the Nordic countries but uh, if you're looking on the world, you will see countries who didn't have internet before in Africa. The children are start running around with uh, their own smartphones now. So, of course, more and more children get online and that huge, uh, will make a huge risk uh, all over the world. And we know also Scandinavian offenders uh, try to find uh, children in development countries to try to protect themselves. So, so we need to look on this on a global perspective. I don't know, uh, Julie, if you have something to, to add. Thank you, Stian. No, just to say, I think one of the, the challenges, especially for parents and caregivers, is that they actually maybe aren't aware of the dangers and the risks until something terrible happens to their child. And I think that is the very frightening aspect of it. And it's why it's so important, particularly in schools that maybe don't take it as seriously as it should be. It's just to sort of reiterate the, that this risk is real and unfortunately, you know, if you don't take steps to protect your children, then you, they are at risk. And even if you don't fully understand those risks, they, they can be something that can sort of harm harm your child 
Um, and, you know, unfortunately, with images and things, it can be quite, you know, permanent, quite difficult to remove. So it's just, again, it's about educating and about ensuring that, that parents can actually work and, and can protect their children as they would want to do. Thank you. Thank you, Stian, Julie. Uh, Wilhelmina, would you like to add something? Yeah, there was so many interesting and important things that were already mentioned, but I see that at the same time, it's this digitalization trend is that's the biggest trend at the moment, of course, but it's also very positive uh, and it's it's something that will benefit our young, our children a lot. When I think about my children, they speak fluent English in age of eight already. Okay, a bit with the Russian accent because of of a fa well, famous YouTuber that he's following. But nevertheless, it's it's great. So they they do benefit a lot from from internet, and you have to have this positive feeling at the same time and not make it too scary. But at the same time, I think the big big trend is of course the the uh, security and then how we can all do do it at the same time uh, authorities uh, products uh, secure products but mostly with the people because uh, with the criminals we see that they are quite quite fast in moving forward and and getting new ways to to hack and 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 how do frauds and all these so we have to uh, tell people so that they understand what's happening and they they should have this cautious feeling when they are thinking if this looks too good to be true or something like that that then it, it, it is because that's more of course with the adults at the moment we see a lot of fraud cases uh, but uh, but that's that's the biggest thing i think that together uh, the visibility that we have now with these issues to to guide and people thank you wilhelmina and helena please thank you just thinking about the future and what I'm seeing a lot is that a lot of things will be automated in the future, even more than they are now. Protection will be automated. Privacy will be more automated. We will see more things done towards automating security for the benefit of everyone, for the benefit of our children, for the benefit of adults. But also automation will be used to try and breach that trust to try and breach our privacy, try and breach our security. And we must understand how it works, uh, how systems are used to protect us and how systems are used to uh, try to go against us. And that wider understanding, I think, is already being supported by the National Education Programme in Finland, where actually uh, the current Opetusone Talma, the education programme, includes programming logic, computational understanding. So we are already teaching children some of these skills in schools to understand what is actually happening on the background of security when they enter online worlds and how things can be done to make it better or how thing can, things can be utilized to protect everyone else. And from a gaming perspective, since we've been talking a lot about gaming, um, I think like this is one of the things that we'll be seeing more in the future. So virtual gaming, going into virtual worlds, being even more out of sight from adults' minds and their gazes. So how when children are entering virtual worlds, how will be how will be the protection there? And how can we make sure that we see what's happening? How can we be sure that their privacy is being protected? How can we be sure that they are safe? So I think those are some of the biggest things we see going in the future. Wow. That was pretty amazing that you pulled that out of there. <laughs> Thank you, Helena. And Maria Lisa, please. Thank you. I have nothing to show you, <laughs> but I have to say that there are a lot of pressures for schools and teachers. So we have to remember that they have so many other things to do. Uh, please help them that they can uh, handle also this kind of uh, safety skills. So homes, schools, 
early childhood education centers, media, we all should act together and ensure the digital safety world. Even if learning takes place more and more outside of the school or outside of early childhood education center, the versatile and safe learning environment offered by the school or ECE provide a strong support for the growth of the pupil and, and child. Uh, the maybe fundamental value is that every child is unique and has the right to have high quality education. So it means that children are heard, valued and encouraged. They feel that they are that they are doing in free time, also in free time, also mother. Children are guided towards a safe way of using digital tools and understanding the importance of it themselves. The knowledge and skills as well as values, attitudes and will are needed of all of us, not only from children or teachers. So I think that in the future, actually we are all lifelong learners. Schools and early childhood education centers take care of the safety, safety, digital environment and also well-being of each other and every member of each community. Uh, I think that we should uh, systematically promote safe working approaches in digital environments, as well as cooperation and interaction with professionals, organizations, authorities, citizens. Mm. We all. Thank you. Cooperation, I, I think it's the word of today. And I think it's only proper that the last comment on this conversation is, is for Kim of the police. And so before that, Sunny, you will have your say and please leave some time to Kim also to close this, uh, close this panel discussion for us. Thank you. Yes, I will be very, very brief if that was the, the point. Uh, and uh, yeah, very good points. Just to emphasize a couple of things. First of all, uh, I think that uh, being aware of the channels and the platforms, whatever you do, you're in the digital world. That's part of your job. So that's a individual, I would say, responsibility. It's not the responsibility of schools or uh, that group. So that it's each and every one of us. The second thing is that you don't have to uh, be totally aware and uh, leave your, let's say, children alone. There are plenty of good places that where your children can be in midst of uh, responsible adults who can then, you know, make sure that they uh, and, and educate those. So, for instance, in Nordic countries, Finland, uh, Norway, Sweden, and uh, for, uh, so forth, we have a great ecosystem. So you don't have to leave your kid alone and, uh, you know, struggle yourself. There's plenty of help. Wonderful. That was so brief and good. Kimmo. You're the last, but not least. Thank you. I, I try to keep it short. Um, first of all, when I was in school, I was always grateful to be the last group during the group work because all other groups, they always gave the right answers. And I, I just mentioned that, well, I agree with them. So that was easy. That's probably the reason why I ended up as a police officer. Anyway, um, um, I think lots of good things was said, and I, I, I want to piggyback on, on um, Maria Lisa, what she said about uh, children's right to uh, choose uh, or how their information is, is used. That's at, at least what I what I wanted to uh, believe what Maria Lisa said, but um, I think we should give us our constitution and also United Nations Convention on uh, Children's Rights state that we have to give children also the possibility to affect to their life, depending on their age, of course. But if we are able to provide right information, right tools for the kids, then they might be in a position where they can um, give their opinion which is based on, a, on the right information. Let's say that in, in school, for example, they are not willing to uh, use certain social media because they think that in, their information should be in their hands. 
So that's just one one way, which also affects uh, on a possibility to uh, not to be bullied. So if, if they know that their friends are there, they want to keep out of that social media, then they should have right to do so. So that's that's one point. But in the future, I, I think that um, lots of things are going on and NGOs, private sector and public sector are doing more and more together. So I believe that even though there are lots of bad things going on in the internet, I think we are going to have a bright future working together, making safe online environment for our kids. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. And I think Sonny said it really well that what it comes down to is individuals and we can all make a difference as ourselves. And and if everybody would just do that one thing and, and take care of themselves, if everybody would do that in the world, we would have amazing place online too. There would be no bullies and, and no bad things happening in there either. So that's the goal, and I'm I'm so so sure that we'll get there. It sometimes it's baby steps, but it doesn't matter. It's still steps towards that goal. 